transformations. There are four types of transformations. There are translations, and another word for translation is slide. And that's basically when you take a shape or a point or an object and just move it. You can move it up, down, right, or left, but this one's just being moved to the right. Our next one is going to be reflection. And you want to think of a mirror when you're dealing with reflections. Reflections are basically you've got a shape and its reflection would look, in this case, it would look, it's just flipping the shape over. Uh, then we're going to have rotations, and that is when you spin a shape. So now the shape is going to be pointing in different directions. And then finally, you have dilations. Dilations are when something grows or shrinks. So you've got a shape, and then you've got the same shape, but a larger version of it. These two shapes are similar figures, so keep that in mind. The two we're going to talk about in this presentation are the translation and the reflection. So translations, we're going to slide different objects or points. In this problem, we're going to take a point, an ordered pair of negative 2 and negative 3, and we're going to move it up 8 units. Now some kids are going to want to get a piece of graph paper out and draw a coordinate plane, draw the negative 2, negative 3, and then just with their finger just kind of count up 8 units, and then draw the new point. And that's fine, but there is a different way to do it, especially this comes in handy when you're dealing with uh, larger numbers, such as, you know, if we wanted to move 100 comma negative 80 up 1,000. You know, you don't want to be counting all that out on a graph. So the math trick for doing this, here it is. Well, when you move a point up, that means the y value will change and the x value will stay the same. When you're moving something up, y is the axis that deals with up and down, so it's going to be a change in y. And since upward is a positive direction, you're going to be adding 8 to the y value. So you'd want to think of this as keeping the x value as it is and then adding 8 to the y value. Well, we plug in our original numbers. We have our negative 2, which is going to stay the same. That's the x. And then we have the negative 3 plus 8. That's the negative 2, the negative 3, and then we're adding 8 to the negative 3 because we're moving up. The new location is negative 2, 5. And if you look at the picture, that red point, that red dot, is at the location of negative 2, 5. So now we're going to try another one, translating ordered pairs. We're going to translate 1, negative 4. We're going to move it left 5 units. So we're moving something left. We need to figure out which axis is going to change. When you're moving something left or right, that's going to be dealing with the x-axis. First, we'll try to do it old-fashioned way. We'll draw the point, 1, negative 4, and then we'll slide it left 5 units. And there it is. So the red dot is the new location for that point. Moving left means the x value will change and y will stay the same. We're going to subtract 5 from the x value. Moving left is a negative direction for the x-axis. So basically, we're going to do x minus 5 and then keep y as it is. So we've got 1 minus 5, 1 being the original x value, and then negative 4 is the original y value, which is not going to change. So our new location is at negative 4, negative 4. And if you look over here, that red dot is at negative 4, negative 4. Let's do a few more. This time, we're going to do it without having any graph to use. So you need to know these math tricks. So this first one here, we have negative 3, 2, and we're moving it right 3 units. Moving it right would mean that it's a change in x. So basically, we're adding 3 to the x value. So when you plug in your values, you're going to end up getting 0, comma 2 because negative 3 plus 3 is 0 and the y value stayed the same. We're looking at the top right one now. You're translating 6, negative 4, up 12 units. Moving something up is going to be a change in y. 
So that means we're adding 12 to the y value. The x value stays the same. The x value was 6. It's still going to be 6. And then the y value, we're going to stick a negative 4 in for y and add 12 to it. Our new value is going to be 6, 8. That's the new location. We're looking at the bottom left one now. Translating 4, 2 down 7 units. Moving something down is going to be a change in y, and downward is a negative direction. So the x is going to stay the same, and we're moving down 7. So your x is still going to be 4, and then you put in a 2 for the y. 2 minus 7 is going to be a negative 5. So your new location for that point is 4, negative 5. Finally, we're going to do the bottom right problem. Negative 8, negative 7 is going to be moved left 5 units. Moving something left is going to be a change in x, and left is a negative direction, so we're taking 5 away from the x value. The y value stays exactly the same. So you'd put in a negative 8 for x, negative 8 minus 5 is going to give you a negative 13. So negative 13, negative 7 is your location. Now we're going to translate an entire shape, which is basically the same thing we've been doing, but now we're applying it to many points at once. We have this triangle, ABC, the green triangle. We are going to translate this triangle three places down and five places right. So there's two changes going on. We're moving something down and right. If you look at point A, it's going down and right. Point B, down and right. Point C, down and right. Five places right would mean it's a change in the x value. And if it's moving right, that's a positive direction. So we have x plus 5. That's going to be all of our x values are going to increase by 5. And then we have this three places down which means we are going to subtract 3 from all the y values. From here, we take all of our original x or our original values for our corners of our triangle, the ver vertices of our triangle. Point A was at negative 5, 6. Point B was at negative 5, negative 2. C was at negative 1, negative 2. All of those x values, we're going to add 5 to them. All of those y values, we're going to subtract 3 from them. So if you look at the picture again, we're moving the triangle down and over. We're going to label these points A apostrophe, B apostrophe, C apostrophe. Those little apostrophes mean the new location of the figure once it's moved. You, you'll also hear the term, this new triangle is the image of the old triangle, the image with the new location of it. So basically, we're going to add 5 and subtract 3 from every x and y value. So negative 5 plus 5 for that x is going to be 0. Your new y value, 6 minus 3, will be 3. And then you do the same thing to your point B. It was at negative 5, negative 2. We add 5 to the x, subtract 3 from the y. We get 0, negative 5. Point C you're going to add 5 to the negative 1 and subtract 3 from the negative 2, and you get 4, negative 5. So those are the new locations. Sometimes you'll have a picture, and you can slide them around with your finger, but sometimes they won't give you a picture, so you need to know these math tricks. Next, we're going to talk about reflecting. There's no adding or subtracting on these. This one's pretty easy. All you need to do for these types of problems, for reflecting problems, one of the values will stay the same, and then the other value, you'll take its opposite. So in the first problem, the top left problem, we have this point. That point is currently located at negative 3, 2. If you were at the origin, you'd move left 3, up 2. They want to reflect this over the x-axis. So I'm going to put a yellow line that's where, if you had a mirror, you could put that line. So it's going to reflect over that line. It's almost like standing on an icy pond and looking at your reflection. Your reflection would be under the water in this case, or under the ice. So this, when we reflect this point, it's going to be below the 
the x-axis. It was above the x-axis, its reflection is below. Now the thing you need to see is this, I was going left three and up two, now I'm going left three and down two. So when you're reflecting over the x-axis, you keep x, take the opposite of y. The new location is gonna be negative three, negative two. Notice how I'm keeping x and making the y value taking its opposite. So my y value was two, the opposite of two is negative two. So for this next problem, we have a six negative four. And this black dot is gonna be where six negative four would be in quadrant four. If I'm reflecting over the y-axis, I'm gonna have a yellow line up here. We're reflecting over this line. It was to the right of the y-axis. Now it's gonna be to the left of the y-axis. It's The reflection will be to the left. So in this case, you keep the y value and you take the opposite of the x value. So the y value stays the same, opposite of x. So y was negative four, it's still gonna be negative four. And your new x value, it was positive six, now it's negative six. For the next problem, we have the point four, two. That's currently in quadrant one. They want us to reflect it over the y-axis. So I'm putting the yellow line down for the y-axis. It was in quadrant one, now it's gonna be in quadrant two. It's gonna be right there where the red dot is. I was going right four up two, now I'm going left four up two. So I keep the y value and take the opposite of x. So keep y, take opposite of x. My new values are gonna be negative four, two. It was originally right four up two, now it's left four up two. Now we're gonna do a reflection of negative eight, negative seven. There is the original point. We're gonna reflect it over the x-axis. So we're gonna put a yellow line along the x-axis. It was below the x-axis, now it's gonna be above the x-axis. There it is. So when I'm reflecting over the x-axis, I keep the x value and take the opposite of y. So the x value was negative eight, it's gonna stay at negative eight. And then the y value was negative seven, now it's gonna be a positive seven. So that's reflecting. We're gonna reflect an entire shape right now. This was the triangle we had before, but instead of translating, we're gonna reflect it. And they want us to reflect this triangle over the y-axis. So here are the point's original locations, A, B, and C. And for this problem, which value will stay exactly the same? We're reflecting over the y-axis. We would keep the y values. This would be what it looks like. This is the image of the reflected triangle. And so you're gonna keep the, these new labels are the image of A, the image of B, the image of C. So this is the image of the new triangle. I'm putting in my new points, the image points, and notice how I've already written down the y values because they stay exactly the same. Now we just take the opposite of our x values, and those are the new locations. My point A was at negative 5, 6, now it's at 5, 6, and so on. We took the opposite of the x values. When reflecting points over the y-axis, keep the y value, take the opposite of x. So a summary. If you are adding seven to the x value of an ordered pair, you are doing something to the ordered pair and you're moving it in it to some sort of direction. Well, when we're adding or subtracting numbers to x's or y's, we're translating. And in this case, if we're adding seven to the x value, x is dealing with left or right, and if you're adding seven, that's a positive, so positive direction on x-axis is gonna be moving it to the right. So let's read this whole statement. If you're adding seven to the x value of an ordered pair, you are translating that ordered pair to the right. Now, down below, if you take the opposite of the y value of an ordered pair, if you're taking the opposite of a value you're doing some kind of reflection. So this is a reflect, reflection. We're reflecting the ordered pair over the, 
let's see, if we're taking the opposite of y, that means we're keeping x the same, we're reflecting it over the x-axis. So if you take the opposite of a y value of an ordered pair, you're reflecting the ordered pair over the x-axis. All right, one more summary slide here. If you are subtracting 9 to the y value of an ordered pair, you are translating. And since we're dealing with the y value and we're subtracting, that's a downward direction. So if you're subtracting 9 to the y value of an ordered pair, you are translating the ordered pair down. It's moving, it's sliding down. Next part, if you take the opposite of an x value of an ordered pair, you are, well, taking the opposite of x, that means it's some kind of reflection. And the ordered pair is going to be reflected over the, let's see, if we're doing opposite of x, that means y is staying the same. We're reflecting that ordered pair over the y-axis. All right, that's our summary. Uh, best of luck on the homework.